water and then wiping it on a clean cloth. With the blood and antigen mixed together, the test plate needs to be rotated for about two minutes so any reactions can be observed. Sometimes after only 15 or 30 seconds, positive results will become evident. To see this, a good source of illumination is needed under the plate. That's provided by the light box. Again, here's what to look for. A positive reaction means that the tested bird may be carrying pylorum typhoid antibodies, and it should be considered as being a reactor. This determination can be made by looking for clumps that form after mixing its blood with the antigen. Remember, there are various degrees to which this agglutination takes place. If the results are negative, meaning that the tested bird doesn't have pylorum typhoid disease, no clumping will be evident. But a true reaction shows a definite clumping or agglutination, along with the clearing of the blood and antigen mixture. Sometimes, though, dust on the test plate may look like a positive reaction. To tell the difference, remember that clumping caused by dirt takes place only in one or two spots. To help avoid possible dust, and to make sure that the smears don't dry up following a test, rinse the plate as soon as possible after the results have been determined. This is done simply by dipping in in a bucket of clean water and then wiping it dry with a squeegee and clean cloth. In the event of a positive test result, it's crucial that the reacting bird be banded to identify it as a possible carrier of pylorum typhoid and then immediately place it in a coop for additional testing or necropsy. A positive test result, however, doesn't always mean a bird is infected with pylorum typhoid. Sometimes the reaction is caused by what's called cross-agglutination. That happens when other antibodies are present, ones that are produced by an antigen closely related to those of pylorum typhoid. That's why it's important to either submit blood samples from reactors to a state animal health laboratory for further evaluation or to take the reacting birds to the laboratory for bacteriological examination. If these tests determine that pylorum typhoid antibodies are present, then the bird should be necropsied by the laboratory and examined bacteriologically for pylorum typhoid. Isolation of the pylorum typhoid organism determines a true positive reactor. To assist in locating sources of birds classified as produced U.S. pylorum typhoid clean, the U.S. Department of Agriculture publishes directories listing NPIP participants. Their use helps to assure that diseased fowl won't be purchased and in turn infect healthy flocks. USDA's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service, APHIS, also provides important information about the National Poultry Improvement Plan. Copies of these publications are available through APHIS or by contacting your state NPIP representatives. Although NPIP's nationwide testing program has virtually wiped out pylorum typhoid disease in commercial flocks and hatcheries, it's still a major problem in birds raised by some small breeders. Should the infection spread to large hatchery operations, it could cause literally millions of dollars in damage. But as backyard breeders become more aware of the consequences and increasingly participate in NPIP's testing program, this incurable disease affecting chickens, turkeys, and other fowl can be effectively controlled. Remember, preventing pylorum typhoid is everyone's responsibility.